Welcome to the fourth installment of the seven-part series, Timeline Earth, A Grand Narrative. Today we're going to be looking more closely at the early age of industry. So let's go ahead and zoom right in. So here we are at the early age of industry in a worldview jump. And we've already discussed, and quite often in the previous lectures, the conditions for a worldview shift. New energy, new communication, changes in climate, and scientific and mathematic discoveries. Some of the things that we want to focus on in this particular lecture is the increasing ability for humankind to map and classify the natural world. This is a process by which we can further tame it and uncover its secrets and build certainly a more comfortable lifestyle for humanity, but also create some of the problems that we're going to be relating to today. So let's go ahead and zoom out and pan down and get down into our timeline down here. Yes, this is we're in the middle of white space. So we've talked uh, at the end of the age of agriculture, we talked about the Middle Eastern Renaissance and how all of that information, all of that scientific advancement, mathematics found its way into Europe. And now the Europe is going to go through its golden age. And some of the, remember we talked about some of the um, conditions for a worldview shift. Certainly the Gutenberg press and the idea of printing press that was also invented in China around the same time would greatly increase the ability for um, groups and organizations to spread information, whether it be for good or for evil. And certainly um, new ways to harvest wind and water in windmills and water wheels would dramatically increase the amount of energy available for use for humanity. It would speed the rate at which food was produced and it would also create other opportunities for um, um, early manufacturing. It was also the time of the rise of the individual over the, over the collective, so da Vinci and others were exploring what that meant to be an individual. And certainly the, um, the great sailing shifts of this particular period meant that people could go further and faster than ever before, and eventually the new world was discovered. Um, it's a funny term to use, discovered, since people were already there, but from a European perspective it was discovered. And depending on your point of view, that could be a very good or very bad experience or, or very bad part of history. Um, and we'll talk more about that when we get into colonialism. Uh, we talked a lot about the importance of scientific and mathematic progression, and certainly Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo, and their new conceptions of the universe were considered heretical in the by the Catholic Church. And here's where we see the tension between one worldview that's based on monotheism and a new worldview that's more secular and based on science as the explainer. This is where this comes to a head in this time period. Um, the human mind becoming more and more powerful and more and more able to rationalize its behaviors. So for example, colonialism and the corporation allow for unprecedented destruction of both the natural world and also the mass enslavement of people from around the world to further build richness and um, wealth. And how that could be considered uh, ethically acceptable has a lot to do with, as I mentioned before, our connection or lack of connection to our ethical foundations. And so the human brain is, is particularly excellent at rationalizing its behavior, perhaps slavery, or in the example of Francis Bacon, the burning of women as witches widespread um, could be justified. So Bacon, of course, was one of the great scientists of this period, but also um, famous for his rationalizing um, the killing of women as witches. At that time, of course, women were more reflective of, or perceived to be more reflective of nature, and therefore this is sort of a symbolic way of, of um, that. We'll just skip through that. Um, the, so, by the 1600s, the ability for humanity to think in a more reductive and abstract methodology became clearer and clearer. Descartes um, was clearly looking at nature as a machine, as a series of parts that interacted with no soul. Um, the idea of positivism emerged where material culture or material evidence was the only thing of value. So any kind of spirituality was beginning to disappear. And certainly by the time of Newton and his brilliant mathematic and physical laws and, and um, developments would really form the ba basis of the Industrial Revolution as we know it. Nature, although Newton believed in God and believed that God had put the planet in motion, after that it was all like a giant machine, predictable and therefore understandable and therefore able to be tamed of its secrets. 
Um, there's so many things going on at this time. The steam engine is invented. Um, but there was the beginnings of a backlash against the Industrial Revolution. The, romantis, the Romantic period was a time when artists and writers and others were beginning to question whether this path of industrialism was really the right way to go. And there was a bit of a, a desire to reconnect back to nature, to begin to think about what was really important and where we actually going in the right direction. Of course, by this time we know, for example, that um, the momentum was already in place. This undercurrent of counter enlightenment or thinking about nature in a different way would continue now and all the way through the rest of this story and certainly lay the foundation for the proposition of sustainability as we know it today. And with that, we're going to end this early period of the age of industry and move into the later stage of the age of industry.